I also, again, kind of disagree with you. Buggy slander comes back into play. I just, I can't stand Buggy. Well, I can't. I will also say that how we were talking about how we both love bounty hunter stories. I am a fucking sucker for villains turned allies. Oh, uh, I so Bon Clay. Lo- I is, love that. So the that fact that a, he's just gathering people, he's been beating down the entire series. Okay, what would you say? I mean, there's far this is too very, many. Yeah, this is a lot. This is of, dense. It, it, these nerds, man, they they just they go crazy with it. How do you delete these? I don't even know. I mean, we can just can like, we just do the can we just do S A B C D? Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Like A A plus. Like, what are we doing? Like, why is there a D plus? ranking you know what i mean there should never be a d plus ranking i want to see someone get really into the into the weeds like and that's use this previous it's metric. just like insane here i'll put an f in there too just for funsies but of course none of them will ever constitute an f nothing is an f okay i'll be excited when we get to what i think is my least favorite arc of the series because you have seen it okay um, but we'll get there so romance dawn for me i think it's a beat it's a B tier. Okay. I think it's a B. All right. So I think the uh, the earlier... Oh, there's a shorter one. Okay. This is a little bit better, but it's harder to read, chat. A little bit. Yeah, this is easier to read. Let's just go with this one. Okay, so Romance Dom B, I think that's solid. I will put that. Um, I, I would put that there. Okay. Orange Town, Syrup Village. I mean, some of these are so old, I don't even fully remember. Let me look at the story arc real quick. Orange, Orange Town, Town is, that's Buggy's introduction. That's oh. Choo Choo the dog protecting oh, the yeah. pet okay. shop. I remember now, yes. I did not like Orange Town. Really? Because, okay, so I'll say this much. I don't like Buggy. You don't like Oda's all. favorite character? Yes, I've heard that that's Oda's favorite character. I fucking intensely dislike buggy. look at all the buggies in the chat that you're i know yeah this. yeah they they have it in there for that reason they you, you know bugging don't like buggy i don't like buggy okay i'm trying to remember what the where you are right now what the latest buggy i mean he gets have. a little bit more jacked he gets like longer hair in the prison yeah impel down buggy is phenomenal even then it was like he was all right he, he gets he gets like a little bit stronger which is fine but he still annoys me and then obviously you got the war and he's still i just very cowardly characters. So do you not like Usopp? Oh my god, yes. I don't like Usopp. Usopp is my okay. least favorite. Zora is my favorite character. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, oh, All no, right. It's, okay. It's, it's Ace. And oh, then you're an Ace stand. I love Ace and I love Zoro. Wait, should we do that first? Because I think that'll give us a lot of context. Should we? Who's yeah, we could do that. Who's your favorite character and who is your favorite straw hat? Because I feel like those are two totally different yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, favorite character overall? Yes. Yeah, actually. Ah, fuck. I don't know. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Um, shit, there's so many good characters. That's that's so hard to pick one. There are way too many good characters in in uh One Piece. It's just too there big are, of a work. But you don't come with your favorites like in the chamber at any minute? Well, in the chamber is, is definitely Ace and Zoro are my two favorite. My favorite straw hat would be Zoro, uh, and my favorite character is is Ace, I think. Respectable. Okay. Okay. All right. I do like Soja King. It was a very different character, obviously. Yes, like, we've never mm-hmm. seen him again, ever. Yeah. Uh, he my, was really cool. My favorite overall character is Law. Oh, is Law? Law's my I love Law's Law. My boy. Law's my third. He's I would the, say he's my third favorite. He is the best. And my favorite straw hat is, I mean, I had to represent today. It's Nico Robin. Fair. It's Nico Robin. Okay, I have one controversial take about Nico Only, Robin. Oh, about Robin. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I have a lot of controversial takes, but specifically one about Nico Robin. As far as I understand, I didn't read the manga. Mm-hmm. I only watched the anime up until uh, the time skip. Yep. I think pre-time skip anime Nico Robin is is the best Nico Robin version out there. I fully agree with you. And I think that post time skip Nico Robin, I don't like as much, both personality wise and also because they changed her hair. And from what I understand, in the manga, and maybe I'm wrong, but in the manga, Nico Robin looks more like post time skip Nico Robin from the jump. But I think the best form that nico robin has ever been is uh what was it, all sunday oh miss yeah Sun- alabasta miss all sunday version robin is p 
peak. It, there is no, that is like best of best girl. Yep. It, across the board, like across different animes, I think that Miss All Sunday is the most goaded character. It, one of the best. Totally agree. Misogynistic take? Wait, what? It's why? What? It's the exact opposite of misogynistic if you know what you're talking about. It's uh, literally her pre time skip version is, is unironically, I would say, less uh, um, rotund. Because it's also not even just about looks. It's like when you meet yeah. her and knowing her backstory that she is and she's an incredibly feared person. She's an incredibly, in the eyes of the world government, very dangerous person. Yeah. You feel that. Miss All Sunday is an assassin. And when she joins the Straw Hats, she loses a little bit of that mystery, a little bit of that edge. And I think that's something that made her really interesting. Yeah, I, I think so too. And and her backstory is so solid. Like, that's one thing that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, not intellectual people will look at One Piece and go, wow, look at how big the breasts are. And say, wow, Oda, what are you doing? Why did you draw them like this? Are you a misogynist? But the real intellectuals understand that the backstories for these female characters uh, absolutely pass the Bechdel test, yep. first of all, which is, again, incredibly unique, considering that, like, Nabi's backstory, for example, is featured early on. It's one of the more powerful arcs early on, if not one of the best arcs early on. One of that, the ones like, that most people cite as, like, yeah. this is the moment I fell in love with One Piece. Yeah, which is, which is cr like... It's it's unimaginable for a story that uh, is supposed to center uh, gum guy, gum kid. You know what I mean? It's like you have these really good, you have these really good characters with really powerful backstories that uh, you know you can't be misogynistic and do that at the same time. Like you wouldn't you wouldn't factor that in. You wouldn't make like such great uh, powerful stories for your female characters. Uh, I've seen a couple case. people asking if you don't know, the Bechdel test is. Something in media studies where it's a test for does any piece of media have a scene with two female characters when they are not talking about a man or relationships? And you might go, why is that a thing? But you would be very surprised how few pieces of media pass this test. Yeah, like the Zapruder film doesn't pass the Bechdel test. That's... A JFK assassination joke. Sorry. I just, I had to sneak that in there. Okay. On brand. Um, anyway, it originated from a comic. Yeah. Um, Oppenheimer doesn't. That makes sense. Yeah. The Bechdel test was created as a joke in a comic strip. It's crazy how it's become a standard. It's such a low bar. Yeah. Well, it works. Um, yeah. <laughs> so in any case, uh, so we're gonna disagree about Orange Town. Are we taking averages to put on? No, this no, no. We'll just then? use yours. We'll just use yours. I, I, think, I never shut the fuck up about my opinions on the matter, and and uh, your opinions are what matters here. I think. I, Orange, Town an Orange Town is an A. So Orange Town is an A. Okay, so you love Buggy, huh? I do. I love Buggy, and again, that Shushu story is so great, and it's also it's Nami's real introduction in the story. And you're getting both this mysterious girl who is obviously playing Luffy, but she has that wonderful moment of as much as she's trying to fuck these guys over, she's still a good person. Mm -hmm. And when she goes to, you know, um, quash the fuse for the buggy ball going to attack Luffy, it's like that's that first hint that, okay, maybe there's more... There's more to her. She's not a bad person. She's not just going to let these guys die in this situation. True. So I, I like Orange Town. Okay. As A tier. Uh, I, I disagree just only because I just can't stand Buggy. I don't know. I just don't like clowns. I think maybe that's what it is. Okay. We're getting to the to the deeper parts of this. It, it could be. That could be part of the reason. Imagine if Buggy was in the crew instead of Usopp. The show would be so much better. I don't. Oh, no. I don't think so. I, I like Usopp more than I like Buggy. But maybe it's because I don't like Buggy. The anyway. dynamics are different. You would lose. Come on. You really want to give up the... Luffy versus Usopp. Yeah, that the whole that's conflict really, in Water Seven. That's a really that's not good, worth it. That's a really powerful part of it for sure. That's not worth it. Um, okay. Uh, moving on from uh, Orange Town, we got Syrup Village Arc, which is, in my opinion, D tier. Uh, it is the like it was hard. It was a hard watch for me. I I would agree. 
I think Syrup Village is D tier. I think there are good things to it. Again, I think Kuro is an interesting character, and his he whole is. point against Luffy, if like Kuro is someone who gave up. He's someone who gave up on the dream, and that doesn't sit right with Luffy. He's taking a different tactic, and he's trying to get out of the game. Um, I like Usopp's relationship with his crew, with the kids. That's that's sweet. That's yeah. good. Um, but there's not most of the fights don't really do it for me. Yeah, in Syrup Village also. Yeah, definitely. Like a uh, hypnotic guy, hypnosis guy. Like that. That's like. Um, I mean, he becomes he gets relegated to being like a side character later on, and like for you know comic relief, that's fine. But if that's one of your captains, I feel like it's not strong enough to be a captain in of itself. Maybe I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so Syrup Village. Uh, what is your what's your final take on? I it? think it's a D tier. Okay, all right, so we do agree. Okay. Um, all right, moving on from Syrup Village, we finally get to Baratier, where. Uh, Sanji is introduced. Also, another incredibly uh, powerful character, in my opinion. Love yep. Sanji. He's great. Love our boy. There is definitely moments, like, later down, for example, like, where there was a lot of filler in the anime side. Yeah. Where, uh... Wait, are in, you doing filler and you're watching? No. No, okay. But, but fillers, I could skip early on, pre-time skip. Yeah. But then post-time skip, fillers become a part of the... A part of the episodes because they just... They don't actually make filler episodes... They just put in like a lot of unnecessary reactions from like civilians and shit like that. It's a lot of padding, or or you know like so, yeah. There's a lot of padding to to keep up with the manga. I think yeah. Um, for uh for Baratie, uh or uh, rather for Sanji, the Sanji's great, but I think that uh, he gets really annoying in the Fishman Island arc where he's like. The entire subplot of him like dying due oh, to being we'll get we'll get there so painfully horny okay we'll get there but for now it's god tier Bratier is an S tier okay wow okay it's an S it's an first S tier okay first S the first S tier arc okay absolutely hey. my dad in uh, his his bathing suit um sorry he's just he's just chilling um okay um oh oh Mihawk incredible. I mean, also, Mihawk's the dude. Also sick. Yeah. In all of the great One Piece, this character versus this character, I'm a diehard Mihawk over Shanks. Oh, wow. Yeah, over Shanks. Always. That's interesting. I, I, I can see it, but I haven't seen a lot. I haven't seen enough of Shanks yet. Yeah, no one has. Oh, okay. That makes sense. All That's right. part of it. That's why it's crazy that a lot of people out here, like, yes, we know Shanks is one of the Yonko. Shanks... You know, was on Roger's crew. There's a lot of great stuff yeah, so that buggy. people say about him. So, yeah, exactly. So Which, it was buggy. Boo. Okay, then we fall on opposite ends of that <laughs> one. Then. Yeah, but I'm I'm a Mihawk through because it, it's it's his design, it's his demeanor. He's he's one of my favorite characters. I love Mihawk. Yeah, and especially no, with, with recent developments in the manga. Oh yeah, I haven't seen like the yeah, later no stuff spoilers yet. for you, but uh, Mihawk is goaded. Yeah. Um, when, when Mihawk first appears and like slices through a ship and that's actually one of the great parts about this anime as well has been like, or the manga too, like where the power scaling is so well done. Yeah. Where you're like, like you, you are in, uh, you're, you're in East blue. You think that the world is like this, maybe there's this like terrifying larger world beyond, uh, the 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 waterfall uh, the waterfall mountain thing right what is it called reverse like, mountain not not uh, not the red line the what is it called the other oh, reverse mountain remember. yeah uh, yeah so it, you're like worried beyond what's you're worried about what's to come beyond the grand line these guys are coming out of the grand line and they're like devastated they're like fucking PTSD they got PTSD they're like scared they're uh, and you're you're terrified of what's to come and then this dude comes in with his like little dinghy with his fat fucking cross sword on his back and just slices through a ship. And you're like, how? Like there's so much power out there. These guys are going to get cooked. Yeah. That's really where the world opens up. Yeah. For the first time. It's, I think it's one of the greatest intros when you're like, what the fuck this yeah. dude. And then, uh, and then Zoro thinks he can like put up a fight against them and it's just like not happening. There's no shot. 
Um, it was sick. Okay, so that would be Baratier S plus tier. I think there's a lot of great introductions in there. Yep. So I, I agree with that. I think Baratier is one of the stronger uh, arcs that really uh, solidifies it. And then we move on to Arlong Park, which I think is pretty good. I think that's like what uh, most of the fandom uh, says is like the arc that they, that they really got invested in. Yeah, Arlong's a great villain. It gives us the help me scene. One of the things that I like about it also is it feels like such a culmination of a lot of our characters' arcs across East Blue. Usopp has a one-on-one -on -one fight on his own for the first time. Big deal. Mihawk just beat the shit out of Zoro. He's got one sword left, and he's got to fight an octopus fish man yeah. with six swords. Like, there's so much against our heroes in this arc that I I think Arlock Park is also S tier. Okay, fair. I, I would put it lower than Brati. I maybe put it on A tier, but I get it. Okay. I, I get I think it's a respectable opinion. Arlon Park being S tier is a is a good take. Um a good meme. It's fair. Um okay. Uh after Arlon Park we have reverse mountain arc. It's like no, we got Logetown. Uh, or, yeah, we get into... Uh, oh, wait. We got Logetown. Oh, yeah, you're right. Logetown. Uh, Logetown. What happens in Logetown? I don't know. It's where remember. Buggy and Alveda come back, so you probably skipped it in your head because Buggy's back. And It was a uh, place where we Gold meet Rock. Smoker. Oh, yeah. No, no. Go Dragon. Logetown is awesome. No, I think Logetown is great. Even though Buggy's annoying, uh, you have Smoker and Dragon. Yep. So I think Logetown in and of itself for those two introductions is at A tier. Smoker is so sick. I, I love Smoker. And yeah. I think he only continues to get better. I think he's he is one of the characters I want to see more of the most where we currently are in the series. I think it's really great. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff to it. But I'm going to put it in A tier. You're going to put it in A tier. I okay. think it's a really good and it introduces I think there's so some much, great stuff. I think there's stuff. so much in such a small uh, sliver of, of content. There's so It's like jam-packed. It is. It's short. It's what, five chapters, yeah. I think? And again, Smoker is great, but I think Smoker gets better the more that we see him versus just his introduction in Logetown. And kind of the same with Dragon. Like, it's cool that this guy yeah, comes out of no nowhere idea and like, saves loot, but you don't know. It means more when you learn stuff that's, later. That's the craziest part is that, yeah, exactly. Like... You have no idea what the fuck happened. Like, it's almost like an afterthought. This, like, really powerful sequence where the fucking skies open up and there's, like, thunderstorms. And all of a sudden, Luffy is saved magically. And you're like, what the fuck just happened at the end of this goddamn arc? Yeah. And then, never again do they ever mention it. For, like, for like 200, 300 episodes... They never even briefly go back to that until, like, I guess later, uh, is it... I think it's when uh, Granddad shows up and... Yeah, that's, uh, that's when you learned that that was Luffy's dad. Yeah, it's like, it's wild. Lobby. It's like 400-something chapters later. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? I mean, that was really cool. Like, that yeah. revelation, as someone who uh, was able to avoid, like, most spoilers, except for the the biggest spoiler of all time, um, that was... Uh, well, that was... Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, I was not able to avoid that spoiler, unfortunately. It's hard to be a Twitch streamer and, like, uh, think that you can get away with, like, not knowing uh, something super significant. Yeah. Um, also, uh, uh, actually, Garn's wife uh, also uh, spoiled it. Uh, I got double spoiled, <laughs> but I, it had been spoiled already. But anyway, um, so, okay. Uh, Logue Town, now we've got... And after Mountain. Logetown, we have Reverse Mountain, which is cool. It's, it's cool. Laboon is cool. Laboon is great. Again, yeah. some of what makes Laboon great is further context later. It's fun. I would put it in B tier. Okay. B tier. Uh, where is it? I can't find it. Hold on. Where am I? Where am I looking at? Oh, reverse mount. Oh, there we go. Okay, there yeah. it is. It, it, it's B tier. It's <laughs> a nice little job. Laboon is the main character One Piece. Oh, also, Chad, I'm going to run the three-minute ad break now uh, before I forget because it's the top of the hour. Hold on. Uh, you know how to, you know what to do. 
Okay. The intro scene with the doctor is peak comedy. The doctor is really cool. Crocus is really funny. Yes, he yeah. is. And again, and, when you learn more, when you learn who he is, and, and the bounty hunters are kind of kind of cool too. I think like when you when you get introduced to them at first, you're like, yeah. oh, these guys are like you think every time new villains are coming into the fold, and this hasn't stopped for I would say any even in the newer arcs that I'm in. Uh, Anytime a new character comes in, you're like, oh, fuck, these guys are, like, kind of powerful. And then you realize, like, oh, no, they're not powerful at all because there's nope. so much more powerful characters out there. Oh, fuck. Like, there's always there's always a leveling up that's happening, and I think that it's, like, very well balanced. Yeah. And it's done well. And it's fun because, like, you're meeting these these Brokeworks characters for the first time, and you're seeing them, and they have... They have a little bit of finesse to them, a little bit of strength, but realizing that, you know, they're nine, nine rungs down. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, well, there's a lot better stuff coming, which Yeah, like Miss All Sunday to- and, and Whiskey and Crocodile. Okay. Um, yeah, next arc is, is uh, Whiskey Peak, which I am a sucker for bounty hunters and bounty hunter stories. Cowboy Same. Bebop is my favorite anime. Same. Uh, I love I love that shit. And I think that was like pretty well done. And yeah. then beyond that, um, even inside of it, like even inside of the arc, there's so many cool characters. That's when you first like realize like, holy shit, there's like, I don't know if you uh, felt the same way that I did, but I thought given how terrifying uh, they presented the grand line to be, mm-hmm. I thought that there weren't going to be civilians living beyond the Grand Line. And that's oh, when you first realize, like, oh, there's, like, actual people that live out here. There's a whole economy. Yeah. And at first, when I was watching it, uh, when I was watching, uh, uh, when I was going through it, I was like, damn, like, th- how do these people live if it, this is so scary? Like, if this is, you know, a, an area that, like, the the sheer fact of, like, being in the Grand Line can cause you uh, PTSD. Everything is so chaotic. Everything is so erotic. Uh, not erotic, erratic. Um, oh, both. <laughs> sometimes erotic. Uh, that I thought it was like kind of unique and, and strange. There was like people who were, uh, you know, living. Yeah. Uh, and they had their dials and they were just like existing in that space. And it made sense. It was interesting. The idea that Whiskey Peak was a place that welcomed pirates because it's like, well, if we welcome them and celebrate them, it's less likely that they'll take all of our shit and kill us, which made sense. And it also makes sense when you get the reveal that it's just a yeah. ploy for Baroque work. Yeah. So I, I really liked it. And I'm also, I'm a sucker for bounty hunters. And, you know, we get, we start to get the VV turn and the truth of her story here. Yeah. Uh, and we get, like, more great Miss All Sunday. Yeah. Just her blowing up Egram's ship at the end, which is cool for Miss Sunday. But what I also love about that is the moment where, Nami, who five seconds ago was like, sure, we'll take your princess back for like a billion berry. When that ship explodes, she grabs Vivi and hugs her and turns her away from the explosion and says, we're going to get you home. And yeah. that turn, that moment, it, I think is very, very underrated in like Nami moments. That moment is one of my favorites in Whiskey Peak. One thing I'll say about Vivi that I also feel about the other princess, uh, mermaid princess in uh, Fishman Island. Shirahoshi. I just I can't stand that they cry so much. Like that I I that's the one aspect of it that I feel like is too much of a trope that I don't personally appreciate when it's just like like every now and it doesn't happen too much, but I just you know crybaby characters frustrate me a little bit. Yeah, Shirahoshi did it a lot. Yeah. In the spectrum of our, like, I feel like Vivi's kind of in the middle. Shirahoshi was much more of a crybaby. Yeah. At least Rebecca was also, well, well, you'll get there. Okay. You'll get there. I think Whiskey Peak is... Wimpa an, Hoshi. <laughs> <laughs> I would Weepy put Whiskey Hoshi. Peak in A tier. It's okay. very close to being S, and there are some moments and revelations in it in, uh, that I love, but I don't think it necessarily has the impact and staying power of like a Baratier or an Arlong Park. Okay. What about when Robin says she wants to live? That is one of the most powerful moments. Chapter in, 398, in, the greatest chapter of yeah, One Yeah, what piece. are you talking about? That, That's not yeah. her being a crybaby at all. 
how dare you say that about Nico Robin, who is best girl and one of the most powerful uh, pirates. You fucking dare not disrespect her. Also, she's not a princess, so it really wasn't yeah. the exact topic. She's not like uh, a damsel in distress. She's never a damsel in distress. No, that she, was her whole point. She yeah. walked away. She was like, I don't want anybody else to have to deal yeah. with this. I'm not getting the others involved. She also literally freed a concentration camp. How dare you? Every part of this is wrong. I can't believe you would compare... <laughs> The true princess, Nico Robin, to these false princesses. She's not even a part of a monarchy. She's just a, she's just an intelligent woman who wanted to, who wanted to be a, an archaeologist and and study things, and then you know was swept, a victim of circumstance. All things considered, uh, came out as a, a great person. Someone said that they disagree that Vivi is a crybaby. She, she does is, have power, but part of, she does, but that's a lot of her arc. She has to learn what it means to become a leader. There are a lot of lessons learned from Whiskey Peak through Alabasta that she has to go through. So there's a lot of growth and a lot of strength in her, but she does definitely start yeah, she from falls, a point of weakness. She falls so much. You always, you, I remember like that, that stuck with me that she would just like literally fall all the time. And I was just like, come on, <laughs> like you're a bounty hunter. Like you, you were able to do these things. Like you were still kind of like a, at first she was like, she's presented as like at least somewhat of a fighter. And then you realize like she can't, you know, she keep fall. She just keeps falling and crying and it's whatever. It's not as bad as Wimpahoshi for sure. That's one of my only real flaws with the Alabasta saga on the whole, because it's one of the best in the entire series. But for as much growth as VV goes through, I wish she came, she was Miss Wednesday. She had to have some battle prowess yeah. to get that deep into Baroque works. And as soon as we learn her truth, it just goes away. I really wish that we had VV being more physical, being involved in some more fights. And like, yeah, there's a bit of a, you know, a tag team with Nami against Valentine's Day at uh, Little Garden. But I wish like she was an assassin. She was a high up yeah. member of a league of assassins. And I wish we got to see a little bit more of that. Yeah. And like even her battling abilities, like they're just they just kind of go away uh, unprompted. Yeah, which leads us into uh, the the uh, little garden little arc. Garden. Okay, uh, little garden arc. Princess Vivi uh, is is being taken to Arab Ar Arabasta, Alabasta. The Straw Hats uh, land at Little Garden, which is actually a huge island that's still stuck on the prehistoric era. Um, this part is like. Uh, I think it's sick. I mean, I like the Giants. Um, but there's not too much going on. Like, it's not like a very memorable. It's not. This might be my this might be my first controversial take. There's good stuff to Little Garden. I I I mean, we get the Mr. Prince moment, which is the best part of this arc of Sanji talking to Crocodile on the transponder sale. Amazing. We get the solidification of what Usopp's dream means through his interactions with the giants, through him learning about Elbaf. All of that is really good stuff. The arc on the whole... The giants carried 100%. Is fine. I think Little Garden is a B. I think... Okay. A B? I think it's a B. I don't think that's controversial. I know people love that one. Oh, Really? I don't, people love little, because again, it's very important. Wow, okay, I'm seeing a lot of C's in here, though. Interesting. Damn, I wonder what my first C is going to be. I don't have anything in there yet. Okay. Um, little Garden, you said B. I think it's a B. B tier. Okay. Um, I just don't like, uh, for me, I think, like, villains kind of really change my opinion on an arc. Mm -hmm. That's what I realize. Like, if I don't like a villain or if I don't like their laugh... I know that that's going to be controversial for many in the fandom, I think. Oh, interesting. But if I don't like a villain's laugh, like, I can't fucking stand it. Uh, and and Mr. Three, for the most part, is, like, this brilliant tactician, but also, at the same time, it's just, like, I don't know. I, I felt like he wasn't a super strong uh, villain. There's a lot of yeah. cowardly villains in the story, and... And I don't know, whenever I see like a cowardly villain, I'm like, ugh, I, I get like a little annoyed. That's part of the reason why I think he, it wasn't as strong of an arc. 
I'd agree with that. I think Mr. Three, when he's kind of relegated to a tertiary character who's still around yeah. you know, through the end of Alabasta, through Impel Down and stuff like that, I like him a lot more. But as the focus of an arc, I agree. He didn't really do it for me. Yeah. Which then we move on to Drum Island as Nami is poisoned, catches a fatal illness, and we get into the uh, classic uh, Medicare for All arc <laughs> that I've that I've talked about before, uh, uh, and I said like it's it's quite literally about like gatekeeping healthcare. The entire fucking arc revolves around gatekeeping healthcare. Man literally steals all the doctors from the island and fucks off. Yeah, which I feel like as a concept, like that's like kind of a cool villain. Like it's yeah. like. You know, they're just, like, traveling the world and, like, fucking shit up. And he has, like, all the doctors with him. Um, so, But it's also very weirdly important in a grander scheme because it's the first time we hear about Blackbeard. Uh, we get a lot of interesting drops there. It's the first time we hear about Blackbeard because he was the one that attacked the island. It's the first time that we learn about the Will of D because Kureha yeah. talks about it at the end of the arc when they're leaving. So there's a lot of good lore stuff to be had. There's also a lot of downtime yeah. in this arc. Yeah, for sure. But it, I, I, I don't think the pacing was all that bad, in my opinion. I mean, I don't want to cloud your judgment on this, but for me, I don't know. Out of the early arcs, like, my other controversial take is, like, Skypea pacing. Like, it could have definitely been a little bit shorter, but... Uh, a lot of people say it's like a bore almost where I like, I didn't feel that way. I, I do not fuck with Skypea haters. I do not understand it. People that tell others you can skip Skypea. I cannot wait until we get to the end of the series. And we realize that Skypea pointed the most directly to what the end game of this story is going to be. I cannot wait for that moment. But You're speculating though. This is not. I'm speculating. I, I okay. know. I yeah. know nothing. That's such a classic One Piece fan. Thing I know. To do. I know nothing. I like seriously. I think I've said this before. Because you're I, saying this is someone who met Oda. That's why I'm saying like your words carry a lot of power. It, one of the first times that I met him, and I think it was a part of a test, is he asked. He was like, "Do you want to know what the ending is?" And I said, "Absolutely not. Uh -huh. Don't tell me anything." And yeah. I think that I I think he liked that. I don't. I don't know. So if I, could I don't say that. I don't know I anything. Like... I don't know anything. But so to me, Drum Island is an A. Okay, Drum Island A, uh, fair. Where is Drum Island? Let's see. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry, chopper oh. heads out there. Like, I get it, and I, Dude, I love I my a, small I, reindeer I song. Not, but I am not a chopper head. Really? You yes. don't like him? Too cute. No, but okay, early on. No, no, yeah. no, he's cute now. Remember, he was drawn to be a monster. But he was, he was weird looking until Bear. we got, you know, he was weird looking through Alabasta. I like, I like that chopper. Like yeah. I liked monster chopper. Yeah. Uh, and I also like, uh, you know, chopper being able to control, uh, that, uh, that element of himself now. But, um, his story was very sad though. Like it that's is. like a very sad, it's a good story. It is. Yeah. His it's, flashback is great. Yeah. His, his back, his backstory is really solid. I think. Um, but yeah, I I don't I know a lot of people get mad at this, but uh, yeah, I I think that Chopper is also a bit of a crybaby. But is that's one of his roles on the crew, right? Yeah. He's he's the youngest. He's still a kid. He's what fifteen in human years when they meet him. Yeah. Um. He's he's the little brother. He's a baby. Yeah. And it for makes sure. for some interesting things though, because like Chopper and Zoro is a dynamic that I absolutely. So was it Oda Love. hates mascot characters? He was mad about Chopper, not his original plan. He has talked about that. The design came down editorially because, like, you can't sell stuffed animals of Drum Island Chopper. No kid is going to cuddle with that at night. Yeah, I think that's a way sicker. But I do think that there's a way sicker character than, like, little baby Chopper. I agree. Like, I if agree. He, if he just stayed that way, it would be fire. Like, actually... I think the juxtaposition of him like being that like monster while simultaneously having that voice and like kid mentality would have made it better. Yeah. I think. Cause then his entire character story is just about appearances. Cause he even sounds cute. Yeah. So it's really just about how kind of weird he looks. Yeah. I liked it. I liked that. That was cool. 
Um, okay, moving on from uh, Drum Island, uh, we get to Alabasta. I mean, this is this is S tier of an arc if there ever was one. This is really good. It's and again, I like your perspective incredible, on this is really interesting. Incredible to me because vi- what's up? Because it's there's oh. so much political drama to yeah this arc. Uh, resource management. Yep. Like, like uh, political turmoil. Um, people getting mad at like a like a government that's trying to do best by its citizens, but like still fall short due to like civil wars happening. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff there. There is, and like we were saying earlier, Smoker comes back has a wonderful role here. I'm always a big sucker for an arc. I prefer arcs where every straw hat really has something to do. And this is a great example because everyone has a fight and it doesn't always have to be fighting, but everyone has a fight here and they're all incredible. It's one of the most important early Zoro fights, him learning to cut steel. Yeah. Nami's first major one-on-one fight. My favorite race is Zoro. <laughs> he's so, he's so sick. Sanji versus <laughs> Mr. Two. Great. We get so much Nico Robin here we learn her real name here for the first time also yeah. uh and crocodile is one of the greatest villains that so the series good. has ever had so fucking sick everything about alabasta and it gives us one of the you know we talked about help me before i think the next really major quintessential iconic moment is the raising of the fists when they leave alabasta that sign of silent friendship to vivi is iconic Crocodile, also another uh, a, another point for power scaling where you're like, how are you going to defeat this person? Like, this seems insane. He was the most insurmountable villain yeah. that Luffy had faced up until this point. Because, like, like, Smoker is a, is a Logia uh, power holder as well, but um, you don't really think about it in the same way because, like, you don't get too much of him yeah. at that point. And, you know, Luffy's saved and it's whatever, right? Whereas like here, all of a sudden you, you're faced uh, with this with this battle that y- you don't know what the outcome is going to look like. Yeah, um, I know the crocodile theory. Yes. Yes, you, croc. Yeah, croco mom theory, of course. Um, yeah. But then at the very end of it, we also get Robin joining, which is one of an, an example of something that I love in the anime more than I loved it in the manga, mostly because Robin's voice actress is just so. So wonderful. But the interplay of humor from some of the characters and danger and suspicion from the others when Robin's like, no, you saved my life. It belongs to you now. Like, this is is your fault. I'm coming with you. I love that episode. It's a nice, tiny little bottle episode of people figuring out what they're going to do about this person that says she's coming along with them. She's so fucking sick. Oh, God. Pre-time skip... Nico Robin, one of the greatest. Bring back the bangs. Um, Hassan doesn't know. Well, he watches the dub. No, I watch both the dub and the sub chatter. You're wrong. <laughs> I have done both. I usually end up, I usually end up uh, 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 going in between if I feel like, if like a particular voice actor in the dub version, or if I'm not busy doing other stuff and like because uh, there's too many episodes, I'll I'll um, go back to the sub obviously or if i get annoyed with like one of the voice actors and their laugh or something like that i don't know why when they're japanese and they have weird laughs it doesn't make me as like frustrated yeah um anyway but yeah the the sub is definitely better than the dub for sure even though they're great voice actors in in the dub as well um okay so move on from alabasta s tier yeah easy alabasta s tier where's alabasta first one Oh, there it is. Then we get to Sky Island, which is uh like a like a more reductive version of like uh the the Israeli Palestinian conflict or rather uh manifest destiny or uh it, packaged with like a god that just kind of shows up and then never again it, like I guess he goes to the moon or something in the He's in the manga. Chilling on the moon right now. Yeah. I there is no shot a character like that is not relevant later down. A hundred percent, he's coming oh, back. Skip Everybody, Jaya. Knows. Sorry. All right. I did. Yes, we have Jaya first. I really like Jaya. Um, 
it's a sh- it's a shorter one, but uh, it sets up a lot. Obviously, like Blackbeard, Bellamy, all of the fallout from Crocodile's defeat. This Jaya is such a good example. We wouldn't have the reverie if we didn't have Jaya. Seeing the way that the ramifications of big political happenings in the world are having an effect outside of where the straw hats are is very, very important and is some of the most hype stuff in the manga the entire time. And Jaya was the first real look at what that's like. I can't believe I forgot Jaya is a prelude because like it's so important in, in setting up... Uh, uh, everything like including obviously including um skypea but uh it's just like it's great yeah it's great overall um and all of the cricket the noland all of that kind of stuff is wonderful i think jaya is an a I, I think it's fair where is it I guess I was look because I was looking at over here. It's a Sky Island saga, so right, I'm looking the at the entire saga arc. versus yeah. Arc thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we get to Skypea. I love it. I do too. I and love. I Skypea. have no patience, to haters, because I don't know why people don't like it. I don't. I don't either. I don't. I, I guess I feel like I've seen a lot more of it earlier in One Piece's life, but people just saying this isn't important. It feels like filler. It's standalone. It's not. It's not. We get a poneglyph here. Yeah, I don't think it's. I don't think it's a. It's a skip at all. I don't know why. You can't. Um, it's awesome. Uh, there is. There's a lot of politics. Maybe that's why I like it. Um, the only thing that I didn't like uh, early on in the arc is like white wiper and his like his anger, although justified, mm-hmm. can. At times, it made me feel like it was very, um, like it frustrated me. It was, it was yeah. very like, uh, like there was no, no way to manage it until all the way at the end. You know what I mean? It feels like they really had to start him at an extreme yeah. to slowly, over the course of it, bring him into the fold and into understanding. Because I like Wiper. As things get further along, and honest, I, my favorite panel in Skypea, I think, is that big splash page of Gonfall, Wiper, Zoro, and Robin standing ready to take on Anel. Yeah, amazing panel. Um, but yeah, we get Robin's first one-on-one fight as a Straw Hat. We get Poneglyphs, which is so powerful, incredible. Yeah, uh, Chopper's first one-on-one fight, right? Because his Alabasta fight is a two-on-two. Uh, I know I'm harping on fights a lot in some of yeah. my analyses, but as much as rich as One Piece is, it's still a battle manga in part of its core. Yeah. And that's something that I always really like. But also, Oda does a very good job of, in v- which every piece of media should do, your action scenes, important your fight for going scenes, and everything important, should be... Important oh. sequence for Going Mary. Yes, which, we learn about the Klobotterman and dude, all of that, that kind of stuff. Dude, by the way, Going Mary uh, is like... I think I the most emotional I've ever gotten is, is Going Mary. Like, in, that's in, in, the the entire, in the entire Mary's manga. Lobby. In the entire anime, Going Mary's, like, send-off is probably the saddest moment for me. I don't know why. That made me... That hit me in that way. Yep incredible character maybe it's because it's like kind of the first time someone dies or something dies you know what i mean because like there's always that there's no um there's no full-blown you're never going to see this character again moment in one piece up until this moment well not in the arc but uh, later down the line and going Mary. yes yeah i don't know i just i i think people who skip this are wrong um, there's so much richness to it, not even just for things that are coming, but like you said, there's so much interesting looks at politics and religion and worship and stuff like that. That's apparent in Skypea. And it's, it's a great, it's a great adventure. It's our characters in a completely yeah unknown territory I, I love that i love that it was like holy shit this world is so massive and then all of a sudden there's a fucking world above like i 
I personally love the the concept of like having a sea in the clouds. Like yeah. I just I I I think we take for granted in many instances uh like a lot of the stuff that uh that Oda is cooking up because like uh you just kind of watch it and you're like, "Oh, this is something new." You don't even like sit back and think like this is a wild um I don't know, this is a wild thing that that he imagined here. And just the history that the history that he created yeah. with the Shandians and everything. I love that's one of my favorite non straw hat related flashback stories of like Kagura and Noland and their whole conflict and friendship. It's beautiful. Yeah. Honestly, I was until we've been talking about it, I was gonna say that Skype is an A. I'm gonna put it in the S tier. I think so too. I agree. It's it's so I think it's it's one of my favorite arcs. It, it, there's definitely, I understand why people say it can be shortened. I do. Sure. Um, absolutely. Like it could be, it could be shorter, but it's still really good. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Uh, we move on from Skypea to the water seven saga, which is, I think water seven was my favorite. The like, best saga in the, of the entire series in the, in the pre time skip, especially so far, like, Definitely, I think Water Seven is my favorite. Yep, the uh, the 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 characters are incredible. The villains are incredible. The turn is sick. Like every part of it is so sick. Yep. And you know, it's when you get Garp. Uh, it's just so sick. Uh, but before we get to Water Seven, of course, there is my least favorite arc. You're a hater. You're a long D back fight hater. Yes, long ring, long land arc. All right, well, my I'm, least, I would say probably down there with Syrup Village. I'm going to fuck you and a lot of people up because Long Ring, Long Land Road is a S-tier arc. That's crazy. It is an S-tier arc. It is, it is one of the last times we have had crew shenanigans. I Fair. love the fact that the stakes are so low. It's just crucial. That's why I don't like it. And we're getting, I think it's a nice breath of fresh air, especially for everything that we're getting into. You're getting to see so many interesting dynamics. Like, come on. It's some of the, like Sanji and Zoro shippers of which I am not. We're eating so good because of them having to work together for that particular game. The race is fun. It's just, it's goofy, fun, crew shenanigans. I, I we don't get that anymore. You don't, you don't get a lot of, you're right. It's like, Tournament style episode episodes are like a staple in every manga, and that is the one time when you get that. Like, you know, you get all of the all of these powerful characters participating in like uh, fighting athletic competitions. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're kind of okay. You're kind of selling me on it a little bit. I just thought that maybe because like the stakes were so low that I didn't like it. But there is of course the Aokiji introduction, and he is wow. Yep. I, okay, I can't be the only person who thought this. I thought all three of those admirals, except for Akainu, were black. And then I found out that it's like actual Japanese celebrities that he tailored them yeah, off of. Yeah, they're birthed off classic Japanese, or uh, um, based on classic Japanese actors. I did, though. I agree with you. At least on Aokiji. Aokiji I was like, it, Aokiji's black. That's a brother. There's, 100%. Like, 100%. Like it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense that they're like and then you see the like OG Japanese characters they tell her off I'm like holy shit like yeah no see there are still people who are like they aren't black see, I, yeah, exactly Aokiji has always read black to me one hundred percent look even if even if look uh there are characters that Oda bases off of people that also don't match the race or ethnicity of the actual person yeah. and so there's always wiggle room for things and how you read things but i i have always considered alkiji to be black yeah he he also like he yeah i mean he just he has like like a uh how do i describe it he he has like a lot of the traits that you sometimes see and i don't mean like uh like racist tropes of, of black characters in anime but like actually decently crafted black characters that you see in animes like you have that in him in a lot of ways like, like piccolo <laughs> exactly yeah anyone that doesn't think piccolo is black is yeah. blind yeah exactly you're like okay he's like you know i 
I'm still I'm still not convinced that he's not black. I think he's black. One hundred percent. That's also an interesting conversation because I think for you know like for for people of color in a lot of different animated spaces, especially at the time, we have an affinity for certain characters and read certain characters as people of color because we didn't have them. And so a lot of people you meet, you're like, yeah, Piccolo from DBZ, he was black. Skeeter Valentine from Doug, he was black. Like you have these characters that just kind of make sense. See, yeah, people agree. Skeeter was black 100%. His dad was so angry. He was a black man. Yeah. Um, you said fishmen are black, but yeah, but that's different. That's like, that's written as like uh, an enslaved people. So that's like, that that's different. We're talking about like, out of the humans uh, yeah. in the in the show. Actually, that is one other thing like um, that I always found very fascinating about Oda's work is that like, it is I think the most diverse anime that I've ever uh, that I've ever watched, like ever. Do you know the um? Do you know the YouTube channel Blank Thoughts? No. You should watch some of the, some of his videos one day. Great YouTuber that does analyses of people of color in different popular mangas and like how much they have, what their representation is like. Yeah, because someone mentioned it, and he has a great video on Bleach because Bleach was also a very diverse series, and especially one of your protagonists. Chad being half Mexican and that's it's not just because it's a part of his character and like the struggle that he's faced living in Japan wonderful channel you should shout out to blank thoughts you should look him up okay Yorichi yes one of the greatest she black too someone said someone said Jinbei I don't think Jinbei's black I think he's like Samoan yeah he always read as like Pacific Island yeah. of some sort to yeah me. That's what I, that's, that's how I, that's how I see it. I, I, I know that like there is canonic, uh, like there's the canon uh, nationality. I'm just talking about what I perceive it as. And it's Indian, right? Is that what Otis yeah. said? He's Indian? Yeah, he's yeah. Indian technically. Um, Which is interesting. Okay. Um, all right. So we, uh, so long ring, long land arc. S tier. I will not be taking any that's further questions. That's crazy. I will not be taking any S-tier, further questions. S tier, not even A? Mm-mm. You put that up there with Baratie, Arla, Park, Alabasta, Skypea? That's wild. I do. Because you also got to think about how much time that's in, wild. in arcs we spend where the crew are apart. So to have an arc where it is the crew is all together, yeah. all operating together towards a certain <clears throat> goal. And again, it's fun. It's fun. Okay. Someone said Jet in uh, Cowboy Bebop. 100%. I, I think, yes, I think so too. 100%. Yeah, yeah exactly. Jet is black. Yeah. Those uh, are some of my favorite conversations. Which is, like, what characters do you think? Which is funny because like, like Cowboy Bebop is another, is another anime where there are black characters. Mm-hmm. And they're not like uh, written in like a weird way usually. Which is why it's like odd that Jet is not black. But he is definitely black. People saying Jet is a black male. Y'all stop that. Oh, God. We're not. We're, no, no, stop no. It. Stop it. You stop are it. black and male. No, <laughs> it's the worst line of all time. This. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not doing this. not doing this. One of the wor- oh bars. Okay, we're not going to play the clip. I don't want to give psychic we're damage to 22,000 of you right now. No. No. Oh, God. I, 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 play, I play that sometimes when Chad's misbehaving. Really? To punish them. <laughs> um. Uh, okay. Uh, Water Seven Arc instant S tier. The next things are going to be easy. Water Seven and Eni's Lobby both S tiers. Eni's yeah. Lobby is my favorite arc in the entire series. As I already said, Robin's I Want to Live, my favorite moment of the entire thing. Chapter three ninety eight, best chapter of the entire manga. Um, fights are great. The stakes are amazing. Everyone has powerful I, fucking moments. Oh, by the way, the the Oda is a communist. Uh, it, it comes from uh, Water Seven. This is like because I Wait, play it again. So I give updates uh, throughout this process while I was watching One Piece. I used to give One Piece updates in this channel uh, on its own, unprompted. Uh, do you guys have that? By the way, unprompted started making these like really well edited YouTube videos where he would like piece together the things that I was saying about One Piece. Yeah. Um. Where is it Hasana Bits or something? Every single day I would give One Piece updates and he would like put them together and basically turn them into um into like a like a serialized work. Oh, here it is. Uh here, I'll show you. 
Hostland Saga. He did one on Villain Saga. There's a lot of these. Yeah, no, no, no. Dude, dude, the first episode he ever made, Unprompted, got like 100,000 views on its own. And I was like, what the fuck? This is the part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, and I'll tell you two things. One, I watched Chainsaw Man last night. It's very good. Two, and I cannot believe... I'm, I'm just going to admit this before we blast off because I don't want any of the freaks to hear about it. I watched the first two episodes of One Piece last night. <laughs> it's really well done. That's right. And I don't know. I don't know if I like it, okay? I'm not, I'm not fully sold on it yet. Oh, speaking of One Piece... I went back to it because it's cozy. I've been watching it. That's the only time I will openly admit that. If you ever ask me in the cozy. future, I will say I'm lying. I, I will say you're lying and I'm not watching One Piece. I was watching. Okay, listen. So to, to set the mood here, the reason why I was so resistant <laughs> is because for years as an anime fan, um, on my own personal journey as a content creator, I have yelled at weebs. Yeah. I, I was always like, weebs, you're gross. Stop. Your perverts, you know, stop being weebs, stop weaving out. And then it became more of a tongue in cheek denial where I was like, I'm not a weeb, I'm not a weeb. And uh and then there was a moment where I like openly admitted that I was, and yet uh I still was very resistant to watching One Piece. And I kept saying, like, I'm a weeb, but like, you know, I'm not a one piece guy. Like that's different. That's a separate category. Yeah, show all your dolls now. Okay, they're not dolls. They're figurines. <laughs> they're collectibles. Yeah, they're collectible items. Okay. Um, I did Naruto run at Anime Expo and got booed, but that's besides the point because they were captivated by how well I was Naruto running, I think. Wait, what day were you there? This year? Yeah. What day were you there? I went I went uh both day, I went two days. Um last year I went as well. I, I, I go to Anime Expo. I love Anime Expo. I do too. Yeah, no. I was there on uh Saturday this year. Hell yeah. Um Remember when he used to yell at us for recommending One Piece? Yeah, exactly. Like, that's why, like, th that's why it's like this. Hold on. While you watch this, I'm going to go pee real quick. Don't watching watch One Piece and I fell chat. asleep. We're uh -oh. in One Piece. I'm like episode seven or eight, man. Chill. Stop saying use non anime. Guys, I'm using a fucking television and an Apple TV. I'm 31 fucking years old. I have a Crunchyroll account. I'm not trying to change the way that I consume content. Fair. I don't need that right now. Bro, I just asked where the fucking website is where they tell you how I can avoid the fucking filler episode. You can't do that. Do you no, think you, you have can to watch One filler. Piece on Crunchyroll or on Chat, Netflix? I know a lot of people like do GA, that. but is it is it worth it? Is it I'll worth it? I'll fucking kill you. I don't see a, I see a lot of no's. No, oh, I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Monkey I don't know. D. Luffy. Okay, that's the most hype eye catcher I've ever seen. I am a manga. So as I was saying, I love the anime. Last night, on I'm taking over the stream now. Chat. I love the anime. Some of the best voice acting ever. Does it have its issues? Yes, it does. But I, I am a manga elitist. I'm sorry. I am. On the couch, I'm watching One Piece. I fall asleep. Okay, he's he's fighting. He has defeated. Spoiler alert! The, the, you know. Shut your mouth! Wake up in your five hearts. You spoiler no. alert for him defeating. I'm in Buggy? Arlong Park, and, and it's I don't so know. I mean, sick. It's just, finally, we're getting into the grand line. You know, because people are watching him me. again uh, during the whale saga. We're on our way to Alabaster. We're we're in Drum Island. Okay, I am officially in the Alabaster arc, and it's fire so far. I love that you've got someone chronicling your journey like this. Yeah, no, he he has <laughs> downloaded every time I've talked about One Piece. <laughs> Shout out to this guy. That's awesome. No, he made it like he made Good. all of the episodes. They get they get progressively I, better villain. with like editing, uh, with like sequences that he adds in, and it's not just like me talking about it. It's great. 
Um, right, this playlist is what I'm going to be watching tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. Bring up One Piece. G8 is 100% worth it. Hassan, bring up Roger Base Chat. He's a One Piece YouTuber. This is legitimately such a treat watching all the mentions spliced together like this. Lola, here's hoping you stick with it. I know there's... I know you were struggling with Fishman Island's pacing, but I promise you it gets better. Oh, no, I'm past it. Punk Hazard is actually really good pacing-wise, too. It's Love like Punk Hazard. Yeah, it's not... Um, people freak me out with the with the pacing. They were like, you have to swap to one pace. And I, I get why they said that, because, like, you know, I know Toei is an institution, but goddamn, do they fucking... They, they, they made uh, Fishman Island into, like... A, a trek like it took me months to get through it um there are no fillers in one piece okay man in the manga in the manga there aren't in the yeah. manga my friend um so that that is why i went and bought the mangas like yeah. because of the because of uh, fisherman island i was like fuck this i can't do this um so you haven't seen anything dress road is abysmal on pacing i mean I don't know. I, I don't I don't trust everybody on that anymore. What do you if you are Here's you the thing anime? though, Dress Rosa also had pacing issues in the manga though. Oh really? It did. Uh oh. All right, well it it'll did. be fine. Um saving- It's not bad. No, see that's where I disagree. Dress Rosa is not bad. It does have some pacing issues though. Yeah, it's crazy. There's a I, I there's another TikTok of me like looking at what how much time one pace saves you, and it's like nuts. <laughs> what is it? Uh, one pace is because uh, I I know what one pace is, but what's I wonder what the timing is. Uh, for dress Rosa, it's like thousands of minutes. <laughs> like oh. it's not. Um, dress Rosa is a good start, but holy fuck, the lead up in the final fight is rough. Okay, well, um, we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll figure it out when I get there. Yeah, we got to talk when you finish it because I I do think for its flaws you're really gonna like it. Okay. That's because Oda was sick during Dress Rosa and got help from the Naruto mangaka. Wait, really? Um. One Piece, One Piece comparison. Okay, I don't know this. Uh, no, don't show me the stuff. <laughs> what are you doing? Um. You watch around the equivalent of like 600 episodes in One Piece. That cannot no, be true. That's not true. Um, band that chatter spoiler. Okay, whatever. It's fine. We just saw like a brief glimpse. Okay, it's it's pretty much impossible not to uh, not to have this thing spoiled uh, online. Um. Okay, so where are we at? We 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 went through we were talking about how I mean we're in the best Oh, we were talking about Water 7, which is the best saga of the entire series. Which was my favorite. I think it, I like it more than I like even Eddie's Lobby. Oh, you like Water 7 better than Eddie's Lobby. Yeah. Okay. I don't, well, I mean there is just I don't know. I don't know why. Oh, I was going to show you this TikTok here. Oh, this right, is why right, I said right. Oda is a communist. Oda is a communist. You will never convince me otherwise. He is a man who absolutely admires, mythologizes, romanticizes the proletariat, okay? He has made the most goaded proletarian squad. They're so sick. Yeah, Galley Law. They're so sick. This is before I, I knew. They don't, you know, don't spoil anything for me. I hope it doesn't come out that they were bad or anything. I hope it doesn't come out that they were bad or anything. Oh, here. Yeah, I was wrong. Okay, I was wrong. I thought Oda is a man who loves the working class. Making the working class look good. Turns out Oda is a communist. What other fucking manga anime writer out there, okay? What other manga is talking about workers and unions being infiltrated by the feds, okay? Mm-hmm. Nobody's doing it like that. The Snow Island was all about health care. Uh, Skypea is straight up about, like, uh, colonial exploitation, uh, imperialism indigenous people trying to fight back their uh, for their own land like it's good it's good as fuck it's good as fuck i love it keep saying it because there are too many people that don't want to hear that stuff yeah dude but but 100 percent like feds infiltrating uh, a workers union like that's yep. that's crazy that's like straight up it's awesome oh and it was great because even still having you know this is how this, much the, time is it go ahead what are you gonna say i was gonna say even having CP9 have infiltrated, they still had such a great representation for workers with Polly because there was such a contingent of people that were like, he's joining the crew. And I love Frankie and I love that story and how it developed. Yeah. But there were so many people 
at that time that were like, oh, that's our shipwright. That's the next crew member. It's Polly. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, Frankie's goaded, though. Love, I love, I, I I love, love my Frankie. Cola King. He's listen. He's 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 American. You, he leave is. It up, yep. Leave it up to Oda. It also has trains, which I love personally. I love me a good train arc. You know what I mean? Especially a train that fucking is a sea train. Yep. Like how sick is that? Um, but yeah, Frankie, the American character being a weapons manufacturer is pretty on the nose. It's spot on. He loves cola. He makes weapons. Yeah, he, he's great. He's loud. Yells super. Uh, it's great. Um, here, this is the one, uh, the one page. You by watching the modified version of the anime one pace by arc thriller bark, 541 minutes, Fishman Island, 454 minutes, punk hazard, 530 minutes. I don't dress know how, Rosa. Like, see, this is why I'm like confused because punk hazard is not like the pacing is not that bad on punk hazard. I don't think no punk hazard in the anime doesn't drag. Yeah. There is no there. Like the pacing is really good on punk hazard. Uh, I, I don't know. It's the end of punk hazard. Is that why? I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm not at the end yet. Um, I don't know exactly where oh I'm at. God, sorry. I'm I was about to ask questions. Like, do you mean this, but that's where you are. So I'm at, I'm at like a, a, a fucking Caesar with the, with the jelly. Uh, and then he gives the jelly like a candy. Yep, and then there's a. I think there was like a like a devil fruit there that formed as well. I couldn't tell what was going on there, but okay, got it. That's exa- That's precisely where I'm at. Oh, they include recaps. Okay, yeah, because you're cutting anywhere between three to seven minutes out of every episode. Oh, then, if I that's never. The case. Wa- okay, well, I never fucking okay. watch recaps anyway. Yeah. yeah, you watch the opening song, you skip the recap, and you just go into the episode. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is when people were like. <laughs> Bro, talking like you work for the world government. I said, Luffy people is a freedom. People were so mad at you, bro. Yeah. They, they, it's just like, a lot of people were just like farming. Uh, they were just trying to be like, Hassan is, is, is wrong about this. It's like, no, I'm not. Everyone was yelling at this dude anyway. They were like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> you know what he meant. Um. Anyway, Smiley Dot. What? Okay. Oh, Smiley Dot is Devil Fruit reincarnated. Okay. Um. But yeah, Dress Rosa, 1,500 minutes. 1,500 minutes. I don't have a hard time oh believing it. Oh my God. Though. Punk Hazard, even that being a third of the time saved, I have a hard time yeah. believing. But Dress Rosa, yeah, it's it's tough. Um, people are saying Hulk Cake Island is also a bad for pacing. Um, is the wor- No, Whole Cake Island is not worse than Dress Rosa for pacing. I refuse. Um, That's what that's what people were saying, but we'll see. Um. Okay, so uh, we're at uh, Water 7. We talked about Water 7, and then Annie's Lobby is, is also awesome. Uh, I think Water 7 is better, but, you know. I like Water 7 a lot. All of the... Again, oh, no, I was get, thinking of something else. No, actually, Annie's Lobby is great, too, but Water 7 is still better. But Yeah, there, there's the Luffy versus Usopp. Like, so much growth for Usopp yeah. in this arc. We get the Sea Train. We get the Frankie family and all of that good stuff. Like, Water 7 is is great. So is, much good, Robin. Uh, Frankie burning the Pluton blueprints. Great moment for him. And what I also love about that is it's Alabasta. Everyone had their one-on-one fights, right? And they were kind of sequestered where they were. But Eni's lobby is such a crazy battle royale of people switching opponents so much. And it made it so, so interesting that, like, Sanji couldn't beat Khalifa but here comes Nami and now she gets what to me is is Nami's best fight in the entire series and that just kind of the chaos of all of that while you still have the main drama and emotion of like Robin and Luffy and Usopp or Soge King uh you know really around all of the Luchi stuff towards the end it's just it's the best yeah so S tier S tier Easily. That is, Eni's Lobby is my favorite arc in the entire series. Wow. Okay. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, CP9 in and of itself, like, is is pretty far. Look, see, I'm telling you, it's another, Eni's Lobby not being as good as Water 7, in my opinion, possibly clouded by, like, uh, the, the captains in that sequence being way better than, like, the main captains being way better than the main villain itself. Mm. Like... 
Whenever there's like a like a very cowardly sniveling like oh you know, spandom yeah yeah but he so doesn't he doesn't matter you're right you're right it's still it's still Rob Lucci uh, regardless yeah. but I mean he's great uh, Usopp wasn't there you're thinking of Soja King oh yeah you're right you're right sorry yeah Usopp Usopp was gone it was Soja yeah. King um from Sniper Island far away exactly okay post any's uh, lobby arc. Uh, we get into, what is this? Uh, resting on the ordeals of any's lobby. The this straw is when has... Gart pulls up and he's like, yeah, Hey, I'm your grandfather. Dragon is your dad. Shanks is one of the Yonko. He's Garp, just like, I love lore yeah. dropping all over the place. I fucking and it's the love... return of Kobe and I... Helmeppo, which was great. Yeah. I love, I love Garp. Yeah. He's great. And also, um, uh, w which one is the one with the purple hair? The, the, the nerd that grows in and has his glow up. Kobe with the pink hair? Yeah, Kobe with the pink hair, not purple. Pink hair, yeah. Kobe's glow up is great. Yep. Even though he has a bit of a glow down and then and then a really powerful moment again at the end of uh, a later arc uh, in the in the war. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it was, that was, you know, post Annie's lobby is, is really important it for is. a lot of lore being dumped. It's important. There's cool stuff. I would say it's A tier. I don't think it's S because, it, again, while there's a lot of lore, that's also kind of all it is. Garp is great. Love it is, Kobe it is very Helmepo lore dense, back. but I love that. But then there's the, the this is where Ace and Blackbeard fight too, right? Yes, right. I, I yes, think that's it's what the it says Ace. On yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ace and Blackbeard battle. Yeah. New worlds introduced. Four emperors introduced. Dragon, like that's so crazy to me. That fucking 400 chapters later, you find out that, like, that was Luffy's dad. Like, that's insane. Even though everyone knows this man's name, everyone knows what Luffy's last name is, and now they're just, the world is just now putting together the familial tree here. A little bit suspect, but that's fine. We move yeah, on. That's wild. Well, I mean, he's a secret revolutionary. He's not around all the time, so that's why nobody's, like, thinking about it, talking about it, you know? But even at least the Garp and Luffy, like, Luffy's first bounty has his last name, and no one was printing that and going... Garp, is there anything you want to tell us? <laughs> yeah. Well, they 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 know. They talk about it, right? Uh, don't they? I mean, uh, in the in the uh, the admirals, they bring it up behind the scenes, maybe. But yeah, this is where scenes. we first learn. This yeah, is yeah, where yeah. the audience first learns it. Yeah. Also, I'm running another top of the hour ad break chat. I forgot to run the three minute, uh, the one minute middle of the hour ad break, but it's because we're just cruising. Garp said fake news. <laughs> I'm um, gonna run and use your bathroom while you're ad breaking now too. Okay. All right. I'll find it. It's a uh, first left after you get out. We learn about Garp's character. He's nice to his men and treats them well. The only Marine we've seen since Smoker and Bellamere. First of all, that's not true. We've seen a fuck ton of Marines, but they're all bad Marines. This is one of the only Marines that we've seen that is like, like a powerful character that is like kind of a good Marine. Smoker uh, is, is more neutral, I would say. A cab even means even means Garp. Yeah, I mean, dude, especially after fucking uh, the end of the war. I mean, yeah, of course, A cab includes uh, fucking uh, Garp too. You you see that? You see, you see that at the end at the end of the war. It's just like that's a that's a he's still a cop. A cab means assigned cop at birth, and and Garp one hundred percent has the A cab moment. Garp was known mostly as Garp the Hero as well. That's why the world didn't care about Monkey D. I kind of want to just see what the ratings, Matt rates in the arcs. You see, even if it's without commentary, so no spoilers for you. No. Though Sengoku literally has to hold him down on one point, doesn't matter. Luffy was a sign cop. No shot. No, he wasn't. Luffy is is in the A cab world. A sign cop at birth. Luffy is the perfect representation of a person who was not. They tried to make him a cop, and he just became the anti cop. You just can't fake it. It just shows. You know what I mean.
I guess you're right. He is a cab in that regard. I guess he was like assigned at birth to be a cop, and he was like, no. That's right. You are you are right. Um, The cool thing is, even though Oda does the good cop thing, he also illustrates the people who are, people are who want to do good or powerless within the system. You know, that's actually a really interesting take. You're absolutely correct. In most Western media, you see the exact opposite. You see that, like, there are some bad cops, but usually most cops are good. In One Piece, all cops are bad, except sometimes there are good cops that try to do good things, but even then... They are forced by the system and the powers that be to do cop shit at the end of it. And Garp, I think, perfectly demonstrates that. There's a lot yeah. of them like that. Garp, Smoker. Yeah. No, but like, we're, I'm saying like, it's a, it's a perfect juxtaposition to like uh, cops in, in Western, uh, Western depictions and Western media. Uh, and even in anime in general, it's like a very classic trope to like, all cops are technically good, but then there are some bad apples, right? Yeah. Unless you're watching, like, I guess, maybe like a Serpico or something. Um, and basically, One Piece is, is one of the few works that I have seen where, like, the structures uh, it, it resemble uh, the reality of policing, where they're all behaving in a way that you're, they're supposed to because that's what the system has designed them to do, mm-hmm. Right. And even though there are some good cops like Smoker or Garp, especially Garp at the end of the war where you see him still having to be a cop. So he's a cop of, uh, you know, even if there's internal conflict there, the structures force him to operate in the way that he is supposed to. Right. To do, to do his job as a cop. I appreciate the nuance of that in One Piece. But in the real world, I'm 13, 12 till I die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, it's like that too, though. It is the most ACAB fucking uh, work. Really. Um, okay. So let's move on to... Thriller Bark. My, this is actually my least favorite arc. Except for the end. What? Except for the ending. I have seen the anime and various points of it so many times. But you know, everyone has like, this is a movie I always watch at Christmas or whatever. I watch Thriller Bark every October. That's crazy. It is very, it is very Halloween coded. Yes. It's the most Halloween coded arc. I straight up, especially maybe it was because it was right after two of the best arcs in the fucking show. Yeah. Where I was like, what the fuck am I watching? Like, I cannot fucking stand gecko moria moria is not a great villain i find him to be an interesting character and there's more stuff that you'll learn about him later but he's not the again it goes back to like who is who is at the top who is the head he's not crocodile he's not luchi he's not the best villain he is i i like a couple things make thriller bark palatable um, the, the Luffy becoming, uh, the, the, what is it? The world? What, what was oh, it? Oh, when like he puts the, a shadow in, uh, Ors Jr. Yeah. Or like, no, sorry, not Ors. Ors Jr. is on Whitebeard's crew. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of fun. Like that was definitely fun. I think like how, one thing I have to, by the way, uh, uh, admit here is that I think Oda as a mangaka does a really phenomenal job of showing scale Mm-hmm. that sometimes doesn't translate that well into the anime. Like, mm. like I saw that when I compared Fishman Island to the manga versus the anime, where, like, I thought when you, when you read the manga on Fishman Island, like, you see how massive Noah's Ark truly is. Whereas in the anime, it, like, there are certain points where, like, I feel like the scale doesn't uh, translate as well. Okay. Which I thought was interesting. Maybe maybe it's the same with Or. I, I didn't actually read the manga there. But um, so, uh, yeah, the end of Thriller Bark is really good. Obviously, uh, Zoro's moment and also uh, Kuma. Yep. Great. Nothing fucking, happened. One of Zoro's best moments. Yeah. Fucking awesome. Uh, but still, we get good stuff. We get Brooke's introduction. Usopp versus Perona is one of my favorite fights in the entire series. And I love how well set up it is that like this is the only person who could go up against Perona. Yeah. Um. 
so your what is your what's your take on it? I think Thriller Bark is an A. Also because Thriller Bark sets up so like it's when you look back there's some spoilers to Thriller Bark stuff that I don't want to talk about because you're not there yet, but we'll get to it. Okay. But Usopp Perona, I love. Um yes, Ryuma and all of the Zoro stuff is great. Brooks intro. Um and yeah, again, just crew shenanigans. One of the best One Piece memes come out of comes out of this arc of Luffy pushing the zombie back into the ground. And so a lot of the early stuff with like the weak trio being off on their own and kind of being scared and stuff. And then you get the others and there's yeah, all the that, pirate stuff, docking fun. Like there's that's good, what frustrates me. That's what I'm saying. It's like the, so you don't like fun. No, I don't. <laughs> I want like I want one thing I'll say is like, and I've I brought this up as a criticism. Um I don't know uh what you will think about this, but uh Oda is very good at like world building and I love world building. That's mm -hmm. why I loved Cyberpunk, even though it was like a bit of a massive flop on release. I'm a major sucker for uh like well developed worlds. Uh I love the political themes. I love good characters. Oda does that really well. But one thing that I think uh, is is not a strong suit, in my opinion, is his battle sequences. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it's like character v character, and that's great. But there's not a lot of tactics involved in his in his fight sequences. It's more so just like head on. Luffy goes head on. He overpowers his opponent, uh, or or like Zoro trains really hard and he overpowers his opponent, or like they overcome trials certainly, but it's never. It's it's never uh like a like a game of tactics like in JoJo for example mm -hmm. everything is a, a all the battle sequences all the choreography is designed well it's not even necessarily the choreography but it's more so like it's like different powers working against one another perfectly though one of the few times that you see that is actually with uh, Enaru mm -hmm. versus Luffy right him being rubber Enaru being lightning uh that's a perfect matchup yeah and. Outside of that, you don't get to see a lot of that in in many of the, uh, in in many of the battles. I guess maybe like hockey changes that a little bit uh, later later on. But like I, I think said, hockey makes that worse. Oh really? Okay. Uh, I think hockey starts to take a lot of the the personality, the tactics, and things like that out of specific devil fruit. Oh, because like, oh yeah, you're right. Because Logia now you can like use hockey to 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 hit characters. So that's interesting. I guess I guess that you're right. That that makes it uh, uh, different. But uh, there's no setup for straw hats. Only throwing hands. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it, it is definitely one thing. It's definitely one thing that I've like uh, found myself. Uh, missing i guess it's fine it's still a really good work on uh, across the board it's really compelling really entertaining but um that is the one thing that i i feel like you often see in in some of the other animes that i don't really see in one piece at all like i mentioned the the fact that there is no um even in the pirate war when you think about it like there are some some turns in the battle mm -hmm. where you're like, Oh fuck. Uh, I can't believe that this happened. Right. Like there's some pivotal moments in the battle, uh, where it, you know, it takes you from a uh, place to place, but there's no like Luffy's power set up perfectly as a counter to this power. Or, um, there, there's like a long buildup of like different kinds of, uh, actions that they, that they plan that finally come together. It's more so, Hurdles are being thrown, mm -hmm. and they overcome it, oftentimes by brute forcing it. I think that's one of the reasons that I like Usopp versus Perona so much, because I think you do get some of that. You have someone that is a perfectly suited counter to someone's abilities, and him fighting her isn't just about, I'm stronger than you. It's He's, he's psychologically torturing this goth girl yeah. to defeat her. Yeah, that is, you're, you're right about that. That's like... It works perfectly because of his weaknesses turning into strengths uh, in that battle. Um, you forget when Luffy perfectly dismantles Mihawk's abilities when he uses Buggy as his jet human shield? What is, wait, where is that from? In Marine Ford. In, when Mihawk's coming to attack Luffy and he uses oh yeah. Buggy as like a human shield. Yeah, but, you know. 
is that's that's a tiny uh, portion of it. It's mostly it's mostly like I said, like not a lot of planning going on, not a lot of like tactics. It's not like it's not like a game of chess. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, Usopp does that more. I would say Usopp has a lot of setups because mm-hmm. like that's he's not very powerful overall in comparison to the other guys. Uh, so I think that, yeah, I think that he by nature has to like uh engage in these kinds of like tricks and and uh, technical fights. Yeah. Um okay. So where were we? We did uh so uh, thriller, thriller bark. bark. Wait, did I put it up there? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you A-tier. put it at A tier. Okay. And then uh we get into uh, the Summit War Saga. Sabaody Archipelago, another fucking awesome I love this. Yeah, art. somebody is S tier for it's sure. It's so good. Oh, another controversial take. At first, I loved Brooke. I think Brooke is the first time where I'm like, maybe there's too many characters. Too many characters. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like Brooke is just kind of there, but especially I, later, like because not not in like Thriller Bark, obviously, or not in like the the earlier arcs when he comes in, but there are times when. I, I'm like, he's just kind of there. I wish like, cause his, his like samurai abilities are pretty sick. Like the whole, like the Omae wa Mashinderu style. Like, yeah. <laughs> like he just walks past you and you're fucking sliced and diced. Right. Like that stuff is cool. But I, I don't know. I feel like I don't see a lot of it. Uh, I don't see enough of it so wrong you literally just hate everything fun in one piece i don't think that's a problem with brooke though i just think that's a problem of the utilization of different characters and different focus because especially once we get further into post time skip a lot more characters who aren't straw hats get a lot of focus i mean you're seeing it already in parts in in punk hazard and stuff um and i think some straw hats get a lot more focus than others which is a shame which is a shame because again, like we talked about in uh, Skypea, Robin has a one-on-one fight. It is over a decade until you see another one for her. And that's not that she doesn't have good things. And some people are pointing out when you get to Whole Cake Island, Brooke has at least two phenomenal moments Okay. in Whole Cake Island. We'll see, yeah. I think it's just certain characters start to take a back seat, especially post time skip Brooke also maybe the other thing is like because I love like Sanji's the pervert you know what I mean and then Brooke is like like Brooke's pervertry almost comes as like an afterthought where you're like they just kind of added that in like why are there why are there two perverts in the crew (laughs) you know what I mean like and and Brooke is only Brooke is only a pervert from the perspective of like wanting to see the panties like that's what he wants to see um anyway two you mean three what Frankie too? I mean, Wait, let's not talk spoilers because I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. Hassan's not there, but let me think on what the third because there are two very clear ones to me in my head. I'll have to think about what the third one is. What do you uh, like? Third pervert in the crew? What do you mean? Oh, I thought they were saying Brooke moments. Oh, oh, oh no, they were saying there's three perverts oh, in the three crew. Per- They're saying Frankie's a pervert, even <laughs> though Frankie gets. Oh my god, Frankie, Frankie is nowhere near on the level yeah, of Sanji. No, and Brooke, he's though. not like. Frankie is not a pervert. Luffy is ace. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Luffy is ace aromantic. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, what was I going to say? Frankie's exhibition is not really. I feel like, yeah, Frank got cock and ball torture from Nico Robin. Yeah, he didn't do that himself. Yeah, and he, and he didn't even like it, which is like, what are you doing? Like, that's the greatest thing that could have ever happened, and you don't even enjoy it? What the fuck's wrong with you? Seriously, he doesn't know how lucky he is. Yeah, multiple arm cock and ball torture is crazy. <laughs> from Nico Robin? Come on. Yeah, that's nuts. Best girl. Um, uh, Sabadi is great. Sabadi is S tier. Um. The introduction of the worst generation. Also, it's just, it's a fun, it's a yeah. fun world. It's a great place. Yeah. We get Rayleigh, we get the worst generation, and we get Dude, Kuma fucking, fucking celestial annihilated. Dragons. Yeah, we get the, the punch of the celestial dragon in the auction oh, house. And we so get one of the sick. most devastating moments of the entire series of the split up of the crew. Because at that point in time, that shit was horrifying. Yeah. There is nothing any of them, they were all there 
and he is just picking them off one by one. And it was horrifying to watch. Yeah. It's great. And you're confused. You're like, what the fuck's going on? You don't even fully understand what like Kuma's powers are at yeah. that point. So you're like, what just happened? It's so sick. And yes, we get the introduction of the best character in the entire series. Yeah. Which is God, awesome. there's some there's Which some... is also nuts because they at least kid, you're like, oh, okay, magnetism. Got it. Law, they do not explain his power. This dude is just taking people's heads off and replacing them with cannonballs. Yeah. And no explanation is given whatsoever. Yeah. He's so sick. He's the best. I, I love Trafalgar Law. He is so fucking sick. He's sick. Dude, I haven't even seen that much of Doflamingo, and he's also awesome, too. Like, I'm very stoked to see more of him now because they introduce him a little bit more in the yeah. in the arc that I'm on where he's, like, a big... A player and I, I love that. Doflamingo is the greatest villain in all of One Piece. That's I'm excited about that, and I stand. I'm by very, that. very excited about that. That's crazy because there's a lot of good fucking villains in One Piece. Yes, there are. Okay, so that that's pretty fire. Law best non straw hat member. Easy, easily. I think, uh, Ace man, he's he's so cool. He's like, I like Ace. I do. But I would the, watch a Cowboy Bebop style ace bounty hunting. Like he's not even a fucking bounty hunter, but like I, I would watch that. Sure, that as that'd a standalone, be cool. as a standalone product. He just gives me uh, Spike Spiegel vibes. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe not as much, but I, I don't know. I just he's so sick. Someone said, "What about Carrot?" We'll talk about that later. Hassan's not there yet. Yeah, I don't know. Greatest character Hassan has not yet met. Carrot. Ace has a spinoff novel. Wait, really? There is, yeah. Oh, damn. Okay. Like the w the worst part about Ace is like that there's not more of it. But that's why I don't understand. Again, he, I think he's a cool character, but the like extreme Ace stands, I I don't get it. Wow, you're like L, you're dead. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, I don't I, I, I don't get it. And look, it's it's a it's a powerful moment. It's really sad, and he's cool when we see him. But I, I just, I don't think there's enough of him to justify I, being I, I agree. such a popular character for this long. Because he's so, I don't know, because he's so sick. Like, he is so fucking cool. And then, I, like, that, I don't know. He, he He's just sick. I don't know how to explain it. He's so powerful. He's so cool. I wish he didn't die. Like, that's, that's my point. He's not that Ace. powerful. Ace takes L's most of the time we see him. <laughs> Okay, fair. But he's going up against some of the fucking best of the best. Like, that's why he's taking the L's. It is what it is. I don't know. Um, Yeah, Ace versus Blackbeard. Like, Ace takes an L. Fair, but still. But that's Blackbeard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um. All right, let's move on. Uh, Sabo de Archipelago, uh, you said S tier, 100% yep. agree. Uh, Amazon Lily is awesome. You don't like it? Amazon Lily is cool. It, oh no no no! It's not one of the best. It's not one of the best arcs at all. No. But but I but it is awesome I, specifically because there you get to see Oda's drawing capabilities of of drawing women. People say Oda only draws one type of female. Uh, excuse me, there are buxom women of all sizes. We Amazon. do see the most variety in female design. Yes, in they're Amazon all Lily for every, sure. Oda only knows how to draw two types of women: either like the sexiest, like super sexy, very buxom, in, like impossible, impossibly skinny, or the ugliest old lady you've ever seen. That like every character is literally having a hard time looking at. Yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah, and I I I like Hancock a lot. Um, yeah, she's great. But the arc itself, it's, it might be my least favorite, like mini setup arc. Um, I, this, I, his penis stretch is proven true. That very that important. Is true. It is. Very important that is part. canon. I, I'm sorry. I think I have to put Amazon Lily at a C. Wow. Okay. Finally, we got a C tier. C. Okay. I think it's fair. I just like um I, I, I like the, the ladies in Amazon Lily. I like that there's it's, like a like a all female island. Yeah. Like I like that concept. And I love Boa Hancock. I like Hancock a lot too, and I think she just gets better the more that we see her. Um I think she's much better moving into Impel Down and Marine Ford and 
honestly, she's her showing up and being involved. She's one of my favorite parts about the Stampede movie. Um, but this was just this is just kind of it's it's fine. Now we're in in pull down, S tier, easy in pull down S tier. Okay, so this is where I I I also again kind of disagree slander with you. Comes back into play. I just I can't stand buggy. Well, I can't. I will also say that how we were talking about how we both love bounty hunter stories. I am a fucking sucker for villains turned allies. Oh, uh, I so Bon Clay. Lo- I is, love that. So the that fact that a- he's just gathering people he's been beating down the entire series for various reasons, and we get Jim Bay and I Ivankov. It Impul Down is top tier. Yeah, it, yeah. Actually, you know what? You're right. I just Prison Break stories are great as well in general. Yeah. That's like a wonderful trope. Um. Yeah, you you get introduced to some really fucking key characters here from Jim Bay and Ivankov to, uh, you know, Bon Clay's greatest moment. Yep. Very emotional, very powerful moment. Um, the prison is based on Nazi camps? Yeah, 100%. I mean, even their... their uh, their gear looks like Nazi shit. And isn't their sal- isn't their salute like vaguely Nazi yeah. like Hanyable? Because I think they do it in the opening. Yeah, unlike Jojo, uh Oda uh, did not portray Nazis in a positive way ever. <laughs> yeah. But interesting to some of the, to one of the things that we've kept bringing up, Magellan is not an interesting villain to me, but it doesn't affect my opinion of the arc. That's what I was gonna say. It's that that's another one of those uh uh moments where it's like, eh. He's like not the best. Yeah, he's not the best. It's just like he's just kind of there. I mean, he he ends up having a really uh, important impact on on Luffy, obviously, because yes. like yes. his his powers do actually work really. Uh, his powers work really well against Luffy's, obviously. Um, the the I don't know why I love. Uh, what are those called? Like the Babushka dolls or Matryoshka dolls or whatever? Like the, the concept of like a world within a world where yeah. you go into the prison and then there's a secret separate part of the prison that no one yeah. goes to where everyone's fucking partying. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, that just Ivankov runs on her own. Like, it's sick. It's such um, a fun place. And it yeah. also just from a world building perspective, it makes sense. Like, yeah, because so many powerful people in this world have devil fruits, build your maximum security prison underwater. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Magellan spends more than half the arc taking his shit. Yeah, that kind, See, kind that, of stuff. That, I'm sorry, that gag didn't work for me. Yeah. I, that, I like a lot of the sillier stuff in One Piece, but Magellan having to be carried around and on like this essentially like fancy porta potty all the time because he's always shitting yeah. didn't do it for me. Yeah, poop humor, humor, which I think is funny usually, but in this setting, it was not for me either. Yeah. Um. Okay, Impel Down is, uh, where, where is it? You already put it there. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. Look at and all those S tiers. Look at how good One Piece is, guys. Yeah. Okay. And then we get to Marine Ford. I mean, it's an, it's an, what do we even have to say about it? It's such an easy S tier. Yeah. Marine Ford is iconic. It's the most important arc of the entire yeah. series. So many. The only flaw, and I understand why this decision was made, and I do agree with it, but the only flaw, if I'm digging for one in Marine Ford, is that the straw hats aren't there? Yeah, yeah, you're that's right. It. It's the most pivotal arc of the entire series, and Luffy is the only one that's. And again, I'm just digging for a flaw yeah. to this arc. And fucking Akainu, God, yeah, so good. Like, yeah, no, it's it's got. I mean, it, that's it. That's they have, they have the the greatest fucking uh villains all get together the greatest heroes all get together except for the straw hat crew um and and it's awesome it's great you're i mean it's it's top of the s tier and the thing that i again that's a tiny that's me digging for a flaw and what i'm expecting is when we get to the end of the world government arc whether that's the second to the last arc of the series or the final one it depends on what you think is blackbeard or is the world government the main villain um i'm i'm hoping for marine ford with the straw hats there like we'll yeah. get, we'll get oh, you're saying that. the end of it yeah At the end of the series yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. we'll we'll get that yeah and shanks coming back i mean he's fucking so cool shanks yeah he's he's cool 
Damn, you you're a Shanks hater. He's cool. I'm not I'm not a Shanks That's hater. Crazy. But I just I'm excited to finally see something instead of just everyone telling us how great he is. I believe it. He just has like a very he has a he has an overwhelming presence, but he's very calm, cool, and collected. He is cool. I'm not a Shanks hater. I just need to I need to see something. I need to see something. Shanks is evil and lost his arm to an L monster. To be fair, him losing his arm to a Sea King is like kind of like, how are you the best? And you just like, how are you one of the best? And you lost your arm like that. Is there a spoiler there or something in the future that we learn about? But no. Okay. Cause I, I do feel like, I do feel like that doesn't make sense a little bit. Like you're Shanks. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got real quiet. It's like, people are calling me. I don't know anything. You got so quiet. What the fuck? Okay. All right. Post-war arc. <laughs> um, yeah, again, you know, like this is a, it's a, I like it because I like the check-ins with all of the other Straw Hats. I like the setup for their time jump arcs. Uh, him starting to train with Rayleigh, all of this stuff. Again, Law, the goat coming in. Luffy would have died if it wasn't for Law. He extracts yeah. that man out of the war. Law's the most important yeah. character in the series. Um, Jimbei giving him the blood transfusion, like all of that stuff. It's an A. I think it's, there's a lot. I disagree with you on this. What do you think it is? You think it's S? I think there, no. Oh. No. Oh. I think in the post-war arc, there are S tier stories that don't fully develop. And then there are fucking like C tier stories that they kind of focus on or, or not like choppers standalone story sucks. I it's don't probably like it. the worst it's setup it's, one. It's so bad. I, I don't like it. I don't even fully understand like what kind of like how important it is for his development of his like uh of his his what is the thing that he eats? Uh the like, rumble balls? Yeah, like he, it doesn't even like factor that in at all. He just like kind of has that power and you and you get to find that out later. It feels like the takeaway from that is like you have this island where cavemen are warring with animals. It's it's about Chopper's internal conflict. He is an animal and he is a human. And he lands yeah. on an island where those two things are at conflict with each other. And so it's about him finding that middle ground within himself and healing. And again, that's me pulling because I also agree that's my least favorite of the Straw Hat time skip yeah. stories. Um, I would say uh, Brooke's story could have been better flushed out, in my opinion. It's like really cool and they kind of tell you after what he did. And you're yeah. like, what the fuck? That's sick. Um with like the whole, you know, they become his managers and becomes like super famous. Um, but the, the, I thought, and maybe it's cause I'm biased, but I think you're biased as well. Nico Robbins story is insane. Yep. Like that is a standalone story. The fact that it's not like, uh, it, it, it's not covered more is a crime in my opinion. Like, it's just kind of there and you're like, what the fuck? I want to know more. Like, I want to know so much more about what happened. And and what could happen on the bridge, like the, was it Tequila Wolf? Tequila Wolf. Yeah. What is going on with Tequila Wolf? What it's all like, does she learn? It's like a never ending bridge slash concentration camp full of like prisoners. Like uh, it's, it literally isn't an arc in the manga. Wait, really? What do you mean? Like, like how deep, I think the anime does go a little bit deeper into, and it still isn't much but does go deeper into the straw hat stories. Oh, okay. It's, I just don't, it's just cover stories. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I guess like it would have been sick. Like Tequila Wolf, I wanted to see more of that. Um, I mean, I, I also, it's, it's Robin and Zoro's. Zoro is the best. Zoro getting sent to Mihawk. You find out that Perona is yeah. there. Him but I wanted to, to see, but I want to see more of that as well. I know, me too. I wanted to see me more too. of like him fighting the the monkeys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the there was mandrills. Yeah, there was there was so much there that like I wanted to explore, and I felt like, uh, I, I felt like it just like was was left, and and then you know Sanji one's like all right, it's not like that good, mm -mm. you know what I mean? It, it's just. Usopp's is kind of whatever. Nami's yeah, Usopp's is, Usopp's is I didn't like that much mm -hmm. either. Nami's yeah. could have been fun. I wanted to see more. It's like yeah. her going to this kind of like yeah. magical slash scientific weather institute. Like yeah. I want to I want to explore that. Yeah, they just kind of like 
just give that to you. They just kind of feed it to you, and it's like a very like on the nose. Yeah. But then we finally get to Fishman Island Saga, the return to the Sabayoti arc. Now, this is where things get tricky for me. This is where I like started going, "What the fuck is going on? Why is this so slow?" Return of Sabayoti was fine. Uh, it's fine. It, it's 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 good. Uh, there are, in my opinion, there are parts where. Like that parts that I really liked, Fat Luffy, like in the crew, fucking yeah, the awesome. The fake straw hats is really funny. See, yeah. that's fun. You liked that yeah, one. Yeah, that was fun. That was actually really good. Yeah. That that I love that. That was a fun arc. That was really good. I still was annoyed because I was like, come on, Luffy, do something. <laughs> like the entire time I was like, come on, beat their ass. What the fuck are you doing? But he does the tiny thing of him like dodging the pacifista yeah. lasers and just like, putting one in the ground. Like the little bit of action we get there is fun. It was fun to see everybody come back because you're just waiting. You're like who's going to show up next? What do they look like now? Yeah. That kind of hype was really fun. Yeah. I'd give it a B. Okay. That's fair. And Part of, I think it would be higher, except it falls in the middle of something that we are now going to talk about. Fishman Island is the worst arc in the entire series. I think this is the only tier I will give an F. That's a really interesting take, and I agree with you. I I am not even... You know why Fishman Island, in my opinion, is like not a good arc? Because it had the capacity to be the best arc. Yes, and I felt so underwhelmed by the end of it. Well, not even because it's like so long, but I felt like, first of all, I hated Hody Jones. I did not like his motivations Wasted at all. Potential. I think there's something to an extremist acolyte of Arlong. Yeah. That could have been really, in- and galvanizing the youth yeah. to rise up. There's a very interesting story there. Yes. It just I didn't play out. I felt like it, it was such a, like, it was such a insanely well-developed buildup for not a very good climax yep. at the end of it. Uh, there are characters that I obviously do not appreciate, like... Uh, Vander Decken. Uh, Vander Decken I hated. Yep. Uh, I mean, him, like, being a pedophile, like, that kind of stuff is, like, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, he's obviously a bad guy. Um and it, but he was like kind of weak uh hody and his motivations genuinely made me like it made me kind of sad because i thought like there was so much there just like you said it could have been so good mm-hmm. and when he's like oh he's just doing this because he's mad like what like he's doing it for no reason no one has harmed him no one has wronged him like no that like this could have been so perfect yep maybe i missed something i don't know but it felt like instead of them being like, you know, steroid abusing uh, extremists with no clear purpose. Yep. Uh, it, it was kind of sad, but there were so many really awesome parts of Fishman Island. Lore dumps. A lot of lore. Which lore is dumps on their own is a standalone product that is in and of itself incredible. Yep. Like if I were to cut it and go Fisher Tiger in and of itself, such a solid character. The fact that he refused the blood transfusion. Like these that are all flashback is worth it. Yeah, these are all incredible flashbacks. Uh they they carry the arc in and yeah. of itself. Every time there was a Lord of, I'm like, oh thank God. Like this is really good. And then it would go back. Um, and then it would go back to like, you know, just so much, so much density, so much filler. Uh, especially on the anime side. One of my other issues with it is I don't think it did enough to platform the growth and changes in the straw hats in the first major arc after a time jump. They, you expect to reveal all of the, uh, all of the new powers and, and like what they've changed uh, personally, but it doesn't, they show you some of the powers. They show you the some. cool, they show you like the cool new toys and, and stuff that they got, but a bit. Yeah. Okay. Someone said the Nami Jinbei scene is very good. I totally agree with that. That conversation, what is it like Sanji, Nami, Jimbe, that conversation is very good. There are good points to Fishman. And honestly, the reason I'm putting it in F, if I gave it an honest opinion, it's probably to me a D, but I'm putting it in F just to emphasize this is my least favorite arc in the entire series. Yeah, I, only because of like what I, I, I agree with you, only because like I think it could have been the best arc. 
Cause like so much is leading up to this moment. Um, so much is leading up to this moment and it just like has a very soft landing. Fishman Island did not feel like the entrance to the new world that I, I, there yeah. isn't like a big, uh, difference either. There isn't a big power difference at all from like the same feeling that I had going from, you know, East blue to like the new world. I did not feel from the new world to, uh, to to uh, beyond the red line or no no that is the new world sorry uh the grand line mm-hmm. east blue to the grand line was a big jump where you're like whoa this is crazy it's a whole new world like it's wild but you don't see that from the grand line to the new world um especially because so much of hody's power just came from the energy steroids yeah yeah hody oh god you're you're so we are definitely aligned on that like I even brought it up. I even talked about it before when I was uh, doing my own like analysis over it where it's, um, Hody should have been more powerful, I think, uh, and, and beyond the steroids and Hody should have had better motivations. Mm -hmm. Like there are twists and turns when you find out that he's the one who's like carried out the assassination. Yep. Like that, that stuff is cool, but no matter what, like if you, are a villain that's that motivated in an arc that is that politically driven, right? Uh, there needs to be some underlying ideology there beyond like, oh, I just thought like, you know, these guys, we were being bullied and I thought it was cool to be like, you know, fuck the humans. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a lot of wasted potential to me. Yeah. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing about it. Cause yeah, like we said, there are good moments in it. Fisher Tiger flashback is incredible. It ju- yeah, it's just not it. Fishman. I Cody was a weak it. ass Arlong wannabe. <laughs> I mean, like literally, that's yeah. what his character yeah. was. I I don't I don't like I did not like that, especially because like everyone hyped it up. Everyone hyped it up as like like because it's the most like openly political. So a lot of normies that watch it are like, well, you're gonna love this arc because it's like so political. And I watched it, and I thought like. That it was a it was a missed uh, opportunity. There mm-hmm. was uh, wasted potential. You clearly didn't understand the arc. Well, why? What did what did I miss on it? Maybe I did. I don't know. That damn boat was falling for thirty <laughs> episodes. Yeah, it, it was also very dense too. Like it was it was so uh, it was so long. Yeah, yeah. This can't be F tier. Still, you've you've heard us talk about it multiple times. Pre time skip Robin over post time skip Robin, all day long. Yeah, I feel like even her jokes changed a little bit. She's like she makes more jokes now. Maybe she's more comfortable with the crew. That's something that I do like about her, though, which is also one of my favorite things about Law is with characters that are very smart, very serious. When you see the effect that more time with the Straw Hats has on them. I like that. I like that we get into a little bit of Robin's psyche and understanding that like she likes cute things and that's a new angle that we're seeing on her. Due yeah. What you, you keep saying with, uh, to chopper to not talk when Frankie's in the chopper body. Exactly. It's like don't like talk. stuff like that. I love, and you'll see it a lot more. You'll see it with love as you continue to, but I love the, the straw hat effect. And that, that is a thing with Robin's development post time skip that I do actually really like. Queen Otohime's backstory was so powerful. There was some of the best backstory, how it ties the main story and all the arcs. The backstory is tied directly in the dynamics of the arc. Um, Queen Otohime's backstory was good. I yeah, mean, it, it was fine. I'm going to be honest, it's a, bit, it's a bit libbed up. That's what it is. <laughs> it is. It's like, it's like very like um, good people are trying to do good things and, and bad people are trying to do bad things. And like, I think in, in a lot of One Piece, you, you see something way more complex than that. And... Given that it was like, uh, given that this was the most like political arc, um, I just uh, I, I expected more. I think. Um, uh, also, the Kevin Flash guy was not fire. You are so wrong about that. Mm-hmm. I think. He oh, just dude, keeps... we didn't even talk about it. Though. And the Sanji bit, the yeah. whole oh, Sanji blood yeah. loss bit. Like yeah. that's that's enough to make it F tier on its own. Yeah. Notice how uh, either of you brought up Hody's crew. Yeah. Because they were forgettable. In yeah. My there's opinion. The, that, that's kind of my point that like in, it kind of goes along with not really getting to see enough of a showcase and an emphasis on the straw hats was tied to, there was nobody for them. Another missed Hody's opportunity. Crew sucks. Another missed opportunity. The fucking, the dude, the octopus dude, not the one with, uh, not the one who like dries you out, but the, 
uh, the octopus dude that is drunk. The drunk guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? He was... I thought he was going to be a fucking sick character. And he had the makings. He had the workings of a sick character. And yet, he just, like, comes in. Uh, uh, he he does the steroids, and it just gets owned immediately. Yeah. And you're like, well, what the fuck? Like, this should have been... Like, it went in so many different directions. Like, there was a lot of lore dump. It was very dense. It was very big. It was very long. And then, like, the fight sequences were, like, like almost rushed, I think. Yeah. And then pacing on the fight sequences on aspects that were slow were really slow. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, it was the worst of, uh, of both sides, I think. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So, that's... How the fuck did Queen Oda Hime give birth to Weepy Hoshi? Yeah, I know. That, like, doesn't make a lot of sense. But I guess they're fish, so they come out like caviar, and then they grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel like that's as far as we can go. This is the last arc you have completed. Yeah, I know. And right? I got I to gotta, uh, end it here anyway. We we just burned through. We did it. But we did it. this was great. Know, you guys heard it here first. This is the definitive. Uh, no, oh one my God. Piece people are gonna people are gonna yell at you for Fishman Island one hundred percent. I don't know if they. I don't know if they are. And again, like I said, is it an F? No, I think it's probably more of a D. Yeah, I'll a put C it on D tier. Best. Fine. I was just. I was trying to emphasize that it is my least favorite. But we can put it in D. Okay. But there you go. That's. I don't know. That's art. Yeah. Punk Hazard so far has been really good, but I haven't finished it yet. So. Yeah, I'm glad you're digging it. It's fun. Five out of six arcs. There are all S. <laughs> I yeah. mean, yeah, it's a great show. Wait, someone said rapid fire the other ones? Okay, Punk Hazard is an A. Dress Rosa is an S. Yeah, I said it, even though there are issues. Dress Rosa is an S tier arc. Um, Zoe is an A. Whole Cake Island is an A. Oh, sorry. No, Whole Cake Island is an S. What am I doing? Whole Cake Island is an S. Reverie is an S. Wano is a B. No, really? You just said I love Wano. B. I would love Wano. I think there are a lot of things that you are going to find interesting about it. Wano is a B. Damn. Okay, well, you can't even... I don't want to... No, no, we'll... I'll get back to you next leave year it. when you, when you gonna catch just up. leave it at that. He's leaving it at that. Wano is a B. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. What's his other? What are some of your other favorite animes? Uh, before before we leave, uh, um, we can also have you back. Uh, you know, later to to talk about this stuff. I can come back anytime. Outside yeah. of outside of striking, I'm incredibly free. Yeah, true. I can. We can have a bigger uh, anime conversation another time. Okay, we'll we'll save it up. We'll save it for an, uh, next time. We can do that. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for wanting me to come back, chat. Yeah, no, this was great. I mean, a lot of people get frustrated because not everyone in my community likes uh, anime or not everyone in my community, especially even if they like anime, like One Piece. But mm -hmm. I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to do that. No, I appreciate you for having me on, buddy. Yeah, no, this was great. This yeah. was wonderful. Um, what are your thoughts about Monsters anime adaptation? What's, I don't know what that excited is. excited to see it. It's a one shot that um, Oda did very early in his career that is loosely canon with one piece oh really um yeah that is getting an anime an anime adaptation i think it'll come out before the end of this year right oh, wow. um but yeah excited for that excited for that hell yeah baki characters do you like baki baki's cool i love baki baki's cool i love it's not one of my favorites but i think it's, I think it's beautifully animated yeah it's so sick i love baki uh, I've been watching all the Watanabe works again. Oh yeah, like uh, so yeah. I rewatched Cowboy Bob for like the hundredth time. It was fucking awesome. Now I'm going through Samurai Shampoo and like the and then Space Dandy. Ever. Yeah, Space Dandy. Okay, where are you in space? How much Space Dandy? Oh no, seen? I've watched all Space. Oh, you Andy. have, and you I, like I'm just it? Like rewatching. Yeah, I loved it because I feel like that's his. You know, for now that I've learned this about you, that you hate fun. I feel like Space Dandy is the most fun of his works. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I guess like one piece, I like the not fun parts more. Well, space dandy is also, it's kind of like one punch man in a way that I feel like it addresses a lot of tropes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I mm -hmm. like that. Cause it's like, it's supposed to be self-referential. It's supposed to be like referencing other works and, yeah. and being, uh, silly. <coughs> Bless you. 
<coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Leftist is on. Yeah, leftism is no fun. Thank you. <laughs> um, Trigun. Trigun is goaded. Oh yeah. Did you watch the the uh, rework? Like the new Trigun. I liked it. I, know, I liked I, it too. I liked it. It was a really cool retelling of that. I know some people didn't like the animation style. I thought I, it was cool. I actually, um, yeah. I as much as I despise like 3D animation, yeah, due to what happened to Berserk, um, oh which is a crime in and of itself, and yeah. people should be punished for it. Um, I thought that Trigun, like new Trigun, uh, the 3D is not as offensive. Yeah, somehow. Like, it's not that bad. It's I actually pretty it good. Lot. I liked it a lot. Yeah. What about Red Line? I haven't seen Red Line. Have you seen, because this is very much. I haven't seen any of the One Piece movies. Have you seen Outlaw Star? Outlaw Star? No, I have not. Isn't that the first ever anime or something? Go. No, it's one from the, I think it was, was it 98? Uh, it was an old school one. It was on Toonami back in the day, but it's another like space, guns, crime little bit of magic yeah 98 Got oh uh, it's this the, series is incredible okay it, I might, this is one of the most underrated really? series i might not of like it all time because i immediately so animation style wise like i hate the big eyes okay it's always like it, it's hard like you haka show is is in a, in a different league obviously so like that's fine but usually like old school anime like the really large eyed anime it mm -hmm. like i don't know I've never liked um, Inuyasha. Oh, God, I love Inuyasha. Yeah, a lot of people love Inuyasha. I've never... I don't like the the art style, like old anime art style. So that, like, the big-eyed kind of 80s into 90s style is yeah. not for you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can overlook it, like... Uh, like, Code Code Geass, I've... Or, look, come on, look at this photo. It's on this... It's on the same level as a cowboy bebop and a firefly like yes these are all spiritual series together i okay if you can try to get over the large eye aesthetic i do think you would dig it i did love akira yes but that's i mean i'm not saying i never watch uh like old art uh old anime i'm just saying that uh it's it just some of it i i don't really like that much yeah before you end, just tell us your opinions on the Chimera Ant arc. Oh, yeah, here. That's the last question. Hunter Hunter is mid. What? Hunter Hunter is mid. Yo, that's crazy. I disagree I've with been, that. No, I've been, I go on record that's his, saying that all that's the time. His opinion. That's why Hunter Hunter that's is his mid. his opinion. That's crazy. Hunter Hunter is mid. If you like Hunter Hunter, educate yourself first and then go watch Yu Yu show because it's way better. Yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho is sick. I mean, Yu Yu Hakusho is the, is the OG. Yes. Damn, you said Hunter Hunter is mid. I only my only take about Hunter Hunter is that the Chimera Ant arc is entirely too long. Like, it's crazy. Everybody hails it as like the best fucking arc of all time. They do, and it's like, no man, it is way too fucking long. It's so goddamn long. It's not. It's just like unacceptably long. I might give Hunter Hunter another try, but I that's my biggest. That's my anime. Hunter content. Hunter peaks at York New Arc. York New Arc is my favorite. Uh, uh, Hunter Hunter. Mm -mm. Not for me. Dog reading the Hunter Hunter manga is so fucking frustrating for a lot more reason than the hiatuses. Yeah, I mean, also, they have, like, straight up pedophiles.